Okay guys, are you ready for part two of Solar Myths Debunked? I am, and you know what? I'm really excited because this is the perfect day to address one of the number one myths when it comes to solar panels. And I'm going to talk about wind and hydro and all that other good stuff, but let's talk about the solar panels today. And why? Because, I'm going to show you this, we have, there's the panels, there they are, right up there, and look at that. Where's the sun? <gasps> There's no sun. Well, you can't have solar panels and, and, and any energy at all if you've got, you know, clouds like this, right? Right? Or is that a myth too? Hmm. Well, the numbers don't lie. So let's go inside and we'll talk about this I myth. always say the proof is in the pudding. So here is my Midnight Classic charge controller. And you just saw the clouds out there. How can I be getting 230 some watts? I don't understand that. And look, we're, we're on float. How does that happen? And on this other one, we're at 270. Well, that's not right, is it? Or is it? I'm telling you people, let's, let's go back out here. I, I'm not lying. I'm gonna run right back out here and I'm going to show you. Oh, look at the clouds. All right, so let's talk about the real truth about cloud cover and fogs and using solar okay, panels. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the real facts. I really like this because there's so many misconceptions about clouds and fog and solar panels just not being efficient, efficient enough to even look into. Oh, people, please, 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 enough. Stop. Time out. Because the real fact is, fog and cloud, unlike shade, sunlight can still penetrate those panels and, hello, produce juice. Yes, it can still produce juice. Now, will the efficiency suffer? Of course, okay. Of course, the efficiency does suffer on cloudy and foggy days. But a lot of variables are added into that because if you have real thick clouds or you have real thick fog cover, yes, your efficiency may go, on, go down to 5 to 10 percent. If the cloud cover isn't that bad and say the fog isn't that thick, you could have at least 20 to 25 percent or more. So there's that variable that you have to think about on a cloudy day. The other variable that you might not know about is called cloud edge effect. When it is a partly cloudy day, you could actually get a lot of extra juice, like on a sunny day. Hmm, how can that be? Well, it's the cloud edge effect. When the sun is on the edge of a cloud, it actually magnifies the sun, reflects on your panels, and hello, you get extra juice. So that is the beauty of having solar panels. You just can't cross them off the list and say, well, I'm not going to get them because, you know, I live where it's cloudy. Consider Portland, Oregon. Consider San Francisco. Actually, San Francisco produces only 1% less power than its counterpart in Sacramento. Now, how So there's a lot be? of things to consider when it comes to, to cloud cover and fog cover. Now, if you live in an area that is very foggy or very cloudy, this is where sizing your system is going to matter. Before you even go off the grid, you're going to have to sit down and size your system. And when I talk about sizing your system, you're going to have to decide, number one, how much cloud cover do you have during the year? How much fog? How much sun? You're also going to have to decide what appliances and what type of electrical consumption needs you're going to have on your homestead. So a whole vast array, and I'll do a video on that. But the bigger your array, especially when it comes to living in an area that has a lot of fog, the better you are going to be able to handle those cloudy days. And always remember, you have a battery bank. You have a battery bank. And that has stored energy. So even on long extended cloudy days where you're not getting total um, efficiency from your panels, you still have that stored power in your battery bank. Now, granted, there are times when you're going to have to use a backup generator. This is reality when it comes to living off the grid. So that's why it comes down to properly sizing your panels. And the other part of reality of living off the grid and relying on solar or wind 
or hydro is you're going to have to be conservative in your usage. You know, this is a lifestyle, people. If you decide to go off the grid, it's, well, I shouldn't even say it's just a lifestyle. It's a philosophy. Why are you disconnecting from the main grid? You are going off the grid to get rid of all the stuff in your life, to be more self-sufficient, to get rid of the clutter and the clamor and the, and the junk, to scale down and create and produce with your own hands, right? So that doesn't mean bringing everything with you. Now you could, trust me, I have seen some pretty big setups when it comes to off-grid homesteads and they've got everything, but they also have very, very big arrays huge arrays and if that's what you want to do hey eh, god bless you that's great but i'm really you know i think most of the people come to my, my channel are pretty conservative so i'm really addressing a conservative average need on a homestead okay and the other thing that i want you people to really do some research on is have a complementary system now we just have solar panels and wind did not work out for us because we just don't have enough sustainable wind but you may live in an area that has a lot of wind. I mean, look at, look at, we've got clouds today. And so we are down with our solar, but the winds are whipping. So if you have a complimentary system on your homestead, on days when it's cloudy, ah, you got the winds whipping up, you can get some extra juice. Even when it's sunny and say the, the wind decides to whip out, you can really top off your batteries very, okay, very so quickly. Partly cloudy, partly sunny. Huh. I think I debunked that myth. And I think I debunked the other myths too in um, not only this video, but my last video. But this is really the bottom line. If you are serious about going off the grid, you guys need to empower yourself with um, the real facts. And instead of relying on the experts, now there are solar experts out there and you can call them up and you can tell them what your needs are and guess what? I will guarantee that half of the time you will get a solar quote for twenty-five dollars to $30,000 for an average home. Huh. Uh, okay, this is the thing with experts. We enslave ourselves to the experts instead of taking the bull by the horns and doing our own research. Um, going out there and getting our hands dirty and going online, Googling, calling people, calling companies and asking questions. Are we just going oh, online the grid and trying to look at a more sustainable homestead? Or are you taking the city life with your energy consuming hog of a house with you? Well, you can do that and pay $30,000 and listen to those experts. Or you can really grab onto the philosophy of why are you going off the grid to begin with? Okay? It is a whole change of mentality. So empower yourself. Stop listening to all the experts. Uh, you can buy the components all right. online. This is the last of my debunking of solar. And from now on, we are really going to be getting into the guts of the uh, renewable uh, energy. And we'll be taking you through our system and giving you some tips on setting things up and maintaining things and just walking the walk with you guys to give you as much information so that if you're thinking about going off the grid either for a, a homestead or even a cabin or an RV we're going to be able to help you out. Alright, until then, God bless!